Welcome to the Bambanani series. Every child has a right to quality education and teaching inclusively can contribute to achieving that goal. This series of videos illustrates how teachers are teaching inclusively in South African classrooms. The videos focus on teaching numeracy and literacy in the foundation and intermediate phases. To support participation and learning by all learners, the teachers in the clips differentiate their teaching methodologies, content and assessment strategies, and classroom environment. Let's join hands to teach every child. My name is Sandy Bota and I'm a teacher, I'm a maths teacher, I teach grade fives here at IR Griffith Primary School. What's a fraction, Daniela? How many pieces of a whole there is? Okay, how many pieces of a whole there is? She's on the right track. Let's develop it. Any specific things about fractions? Hey, Sanele? How many things are divided? Okay, so it's a whole that's divided into parts, that's correct. Any characteristics you can tell me about the parts that we divide a whole into? Shailen? They're equal. Yes, they have to be equal. Miss Boerter taught a lesson on equivalent fractions today, where she chatted to learners about their previous knowledge of fractions and then related that to the idea of equivalent fractions and how they could explore and find their own equivalent fractions. I thought that using concrete objects would be lovely so I used slices of bread and I made an example with apples where I chopped up apples into eight parts and I think it was a very hands-on activity for the kids because they got to see what we do in class on the board and they got to touch and feel and experience it. Okay so I'm going to cut this apple in half first so now what do I have? What do I call these? Inam? I have how many halves? I've got two halves of my apple. What would happen if I decided to cut this half in half? Okay, so let's see. I have four parts of the whole apple. What do we call these four parts? Tell me. We call them quarters, right? Tell me, if I cut all these quarters in half, what on earth do I have now? Okay, I've got one. Okay. Six, seven, eight. She started off with a very concrete way of introducing fractions where she cut up apples to illustrate what a fraction is and the division of these apples and how this related to their re really their prior understanding of fractions. So she really ingrained that idea into her learners that fractions, with fractions, the parts need to be equal parts. I let the learners um, learn and work together in groups because when they are working in groups they get to feed off of each other's ideas, they get to reinforce each other's ideas and you find that if it's in uh, mixed ability groups the weaker ones find and get some support from the stronger ones and the stronger ones get a chance to actually extend themselves. Let's Maybe we could cut it into thirds. Wait. Guys, I know. We can cut it into strips, like three strips. Strips? We can cut it into strips. Two quarters would be equal to four eighths. These are equivalent because they're all the same size. This way? Yes. They're different shapes, but they're all equal. Yes. So you guys are strips and like different shapes. You guys are long and strips. Ours are like a square or a big town. So why are they equal? We all had a hole and cut it into different shapes to make it into a six. Yeah. So let's divide, let's cut them into twelve. They're the same um, fraction, but they're still the different sizes. Mm -hmm. You guys are still a strip, but they've gone shorter. Ours is a tiny little bit tiny. 
Okay. Miss Boerter finds that mixed ability grouping works really well in her class, especially in maths lessons. So we saw that she put her learners into mixed ability groups so that learners can help each other. She also supported this by walking around all the time and chatting to learners, really probing if they had understood what was happening and um, supporting learners who needed the extra help. As the lesson progressed, they started working with fraction walls, which was more concept-based and more accurate mathematics. And right at the end, learners got to write sums in their books and we formalized it so that they had an idea of concrete, informal and formal and abstract as well. So now we are going to actually find the equivalent fractions using our fraction walls. So you need to work as a group, right, to make sure you have uh, accurate answers. What fraction is equivalent to 3 twelfths? Yes. Now, you guys yes. must continue and find the rest that are on the board. Don't just stop here. No. Too much. Okay. But I think we could write this down, guys. Okay. Miss Boerter set up her lesson very, very effectively because we see the move from a very informal, concrete way of experiencing fractions, and that is cutting up our slices of bread, then to a more formal yet concrete way of experiencing fractions, and that we saw with our fraction wall. Right at the end of the lesson, Ms. Boerter then encouraged her learners to move that final step to the formal abstract representation of equivalent fractions. So she asked her learners then to write these fractions down in their workbooks. I decided to include a challenging question where learners had to find a fraction equivalent to two sevenths. And um, they looked and they couldn't find it. And the whole concept and the whole point was to show them that you can't simplify two sevenths further. So that was pretty fun because it was stretching them and extending them and not limiting them to just eighths and tenths, but working with fractions that we don't usually work with. So there aren't any fractions here, guys, that are equivalent to two sevenths. So I'm trying to trick you. <laughs> Let's try two fifths. Who noticed that they couldn't find an equivalent fraction for two sevenths when they were working? Hey, it was pretty much all of you. Why is that? Why do you think we couldn't find one, Lucanio? There weren't any fractions on the fraction wall to fit into two sevenths. Yes, that's correct. Who enjoyed that? Tap your head. Who learned something today? Who increased the knowledge they had about fractions? Touch your nose like this if you did. <laughs> yes, it's everyone. Um, right at the end of every lesson, I usually have to do an informal assessment to gauge whether learners understood what I was teaching them and to see if in the following lesson I have to sort of touch on that and give some extra lessons to in, uh, learners individually. Um, and it's such a fun thing and a comfortable thing for them to do so that they don't feel all left out and having to raise their hand and feel embarrassed. So if they all tap their heads or do something funny, then um, they can be more open with the teacher. So now what we're going to do, we're going to open our books and we're going to do today's classwork, all right, which is working out equivalent fractions using the fraction wall in front of you. All right, let's get started. <laughs> 